Hello guys, in this video I'll share with you 10 nice little tips and tricks in 3ds Max. If you guys want to add to this or if I missed something, please let me know in the comments and I will make a follow-up video. I'll make a lot of videos about this for every program that I know. Just like 10 nice tricks at a time. Some of these things you may have seen before in other videos, but I just want to make it in this single video as well. Alright, so easy variable radius fillet. So if we create a box, for example, alright, and then let me just say that I insert loops through here. All right. And so then you want to insert loops through here as well. Okay, so how you can have an easy radius fillet? Well, you just go into your edge level, then you can go into loops and then loop tools. Now all you have to do is if you want to make the radius wider, you just select this edge in the center and then use this value to move the surrounding edges closer or further apart and thus you get a variable radius fillet. So when you apply turbo smooth, and let's also sharpen this up, you're going to notice how it goes from sharp to smooth here very nicely. And so another great thing about this is that to bring it back, you just select this edge and remember this one as well, since we add an extra loop through here and simply use this to return it back to its original value and make it sharp again. All right, number two, easy variable radius fillet second method. So I'm just gonna control A and let's just say tessellate this, all right? So we can select this edge and give this a different crease value. Now let's simply apply the chamfer modifier and switch the amount type to buy crease weight. Increase the minimum amount, increase the maximum amount. Now you can see it's being chamfered depending on what kind of crease value you give this. All right, there we go, from thinner to wider here. Pretty nice method, and we can even simplify it on top. And it'll still work very nice. This does have some other applications for generative modeling. For example, if I go into chamfer and I decrease the depth, for example, we can now get this chipped effect. We can kind of procedurally chip this away or if we decrease it to negative 0.5, you now get this interesting effect as well. So it's definitely useful for some nice kind of generative design like this. All right, select after cutting. So if I start with, let's say, a sphere. So one annoying thing, let me just change this object color. One annoying thing is that when you, let me just turbo smooth as well. When you select, when you cut something like, you're trying to create a cool shape, right? So you select, you cut like this. Then you have to go in here in the polygon level and you have to select this. And sometimes it can be annoying because they might have to be small triangles, you have to kind of zoom in here and select. How can we do this and instantly select this? Well, here's what you do. Delete a poly, new one. Before you cut, activate the split option and begin cutting. Make sure that you touch the original star. Now it's actually a separate element, which means now you can simply go into element and select this. If you have lots of cuts, you can select element, select the main part, control I, and there you go. All right, I can inset that. Bevel, scale, scale again. All right, now, if we were to turbo smooth this, subdivide this, you notice there are going to be those gaps. All we have to do is just select all the vertices and weld with a very small value, even 0 0.001, and there we go. So as you guys can see, this is a great method for mass detail. We have to go in here and just kind of connect a few vertices. Let me just do some quick cuts here. But aside from that, it's a great method for mass detailing. All right, next trick, simultaneous mass detail. 
This one's very simple. You simply select all the parts you want to add detail to. You have different types of selections. All right. And then you can simply do operations all at the same time. You can rotate, get nice effects like this, scale, make sure you're using this option right here, use pivot point center. Use regularizer to make little circles. And there you go, mass detail without needing to use any kind of plugins to, you know, plug in a detail which can get very topologically messy. All right, number five, selection sets. So if you make a selection and you really like what you have here, you can simply go right here, enter in a random number, maybe one, and then you can deselect everything. Simply click right here and there it is. You can also use the manage selection sets. You can have multiple ones, combine, delete, subtract A minus B, subtract B minus A intersection. So we get this menu if we're in the sub-object level. If we're in the object level, we get a different menu. This allows us to manage the actual objects themselves, not the sub-object level. Number six, geopoly. So if we go here, we have this very mysterious option called geopoly. For many decades, Academics and scientists have debated about what the GeoPoly button does. However, no one actually clicked on it. Let's actually click on it. So what this does, guys, is it kind of arranges things to even things out. Let's actually see what it says. Untangles the polygon section and arranges the vertices into uniform geometric shape. So essentially, if we look right here, you notice how it's wider at the bottom and more narrow at the top. Well, if we use GeoPoly, it's going to even things out. This is a great tool to use whenever you have some uneven parts. Even here, for example, kind of lopsided, geopoly. Kind of lopsided, geopoly. I have to click on it several times. As you can see, it kind of evens things out in this nice rectangular shape. Geopoly. There you go, guys. Now you know what Geopoly does. Very good for quickly detailing these kinds of nice shapes. Number seven, Swift Loop Shenanigans. So here's this little random model I've got, this synthetic cyber muscle. And let's just take a look right here. So what can we do with the Swift Loop? Well, I've got Swift Loop set to Alt S. Now, if we look right here, for example, activate Swift Loop. Notice how right now, this is more narrow, this is wider. And if you try and insert a loop, you notice how, you notice how it's not aligned with the left or the right. If you left click to insert a loop, then hold down Control Alt left mouse button, you can actually snap it to the left, so it's even with the left or the right. Very useful for getting some clean, even subdivision. You can also hold down simply Alt to left click just to move it along without the snapping behavior. Control Alt, left click, get the snap. Another very useful thing with Swift Loop is that you can hold down Shift as you left click, which will apply Set Flow automatically right away. So without holding down shift and left clicking, here's what you get. If we hold down shift, as you can see, it applies set flow right away, which will try and manage in the form to this curve right here. Normally you have to do that by yourself. But holding down shift does that for you as you left click. All right, number eight, converting your selection. So a lot of times you will select something here and you think, man, wouldn't it be great if I could get the border edges? Well, you can. 
By holding down Control, Shift, or Control Shift, you can convert this to vertices, edges, or something else. If we hold down Control and click on the edges, we have all the edges selected that make up those polygons. If we hold down Shift, we have the border. If we hold down Control Shift, just the inside ones, not the outside ones. So for example, if I want to create a quick little panel effect, I hold down Shift. And then for example, extrude to get this. But maybe better to use chamfer instead, because if we use extrude, it gives us an end gone and a triangle. But if we use chamfer, it does not. All right, number nine, disable caddy controls. A frequent question I get. So by default, if we go to customize and preferences, enable caddy controls is on. What are caddy controls? Well, if I select something and then use chamfer, for example, these are the caddy controls. I don't really like how they work. I think it's confusing. And for me, it's just kind of a, maybe I'm missing something here, guys, but I just, I just don't like the way this looks right here. So I go into customize, preferences, and turn off enable caddy controls. Now I get this, I can easily use this like so. Number 10, chamfer segments. So normally when you're chamfering here, you press your hotkey and you get this happening. In order to increase segments, you usually have to go into the chamfer settings and here they are. However, the hotkey for this, guys, is that you simply hold down Alt and then move left and right to decrease or increase. Let go of Alt, you go back to the size, let go of left mouse button, and then you get the curvature that you want. All right, guys, those are 10 tips and tricks of S3S Max. Let me know if I missed something. Let me know what your favorite tips and tricks are. Not necessarily hotkeys, just all sorts of tips and tricks. And I'll make a follow-up video. Thank you for watching and take care.